All right, well, I've been asked to talk about my goose call here. This is a fluke call. It was handmade by a gentleman that took second in the World Goose Calling Championships quite a few years ago that I happened to meet, and that's another whole long story. Anyway, it's a wood call, brass reed, and it's all sealed with O-rings, and this does not come apart. If it does, hopefully I can locate that guy. He's got to put it back together and tune it. Um, this call is, I really like it. It's, it seems to have a pretty good sound to it. One of the things when you operate a, a flute call, you're, you're using your diaphragm, of course, your tongue up against the roof of your mouth. And the most important thing is with the flute is your, your back pressure and how you hold it. And that's basically like this, right around the end of the bell. And this finger right here, everybody's favorite finger, is the one that uh, makes or breaks the sound for you. And when you do some of the backwards honks or, or uh, lonesome calls or landing talk, whatever you want to call it, a lot of that's done with just the call wide open and then using the other hand to get it to carry. You also use your left hand cupping it to help with some of the tone and to give that, that call sounding like a different goose. Uh, try and demonstrate that. And that's just simply opening up the hand. Every time that you get, get the actual honk, you keep the first part very short. Not much growl in the front. Okay? And I'll, I'll do it again. One of the most effective calls that I've had this year for getting geese has actually just been very simple clucking. like that. Uh, in the cornfield when we were uh, shooting geese here a couple weeks ago, you can growl on one of these, uh, which you won't hear the geese do too much on the water, but you'll hear a little bit of it in the cornfield once in a while, and I'll try and demonstrate that. And all that is is just, just growling into the call, and just like that little action with the finger right here to help keep the pressure to get that growl and then you get just that little bit of a break in there just like they sound on the field. Um, sometimes when you got a big flock of geese and they're real noisy and again you know your one call there's one thing that I'll do and this may or may not work for you but it'll go something like this. <laughs> There's a little bit of that almost sounds like a scream in there. The important thing you want to try and remember in the morning if you can, listen to the geese before you get too eager on the call. See if they're running quiet or if they're making a lot of noise and listen for which backwards honk they're using because there's three different ones that they'll use and it changes from morning to afternoon. And I'll try and give you a little bit of an example of uh, one of the backwards honks. There's that one, and then there's the one where you can open it up and draw it out a little bit longer. And again, I'm not even using my finger to break. I'm using this hand to make it carry and go in with my mouth wide open and straight pressure through the call. Okay, so now what I'm going to try and do, and of course being under pressure on the camera doesn't help, but I'm going to try and get a little bit of the double clucking going in here if I can. Pretending that we got some geese coming, they're making a lot of noise, and I got to get really excited because they're really excited. Something on that order. Uh, 
Well, now there's another call that sometimes um, will work on the geese and again it's a matter of of listening to the geese and you got to read the geese uh, it's just like somebody that really knows what they're doing with a duck call you got to be able to read the birds and it kind of helps you know what to do and one of those another one call that's very effective that way is this one something on that order okay the biggest thing that I can tell you about one of these is you can't pick it up two days before the season and make it work this is something that you got to it's like a musical instrument you got to work with it all the time not every day but at least a couple times a week during the off season and just stay in tune and one of the best times to go out and practice with your goose call is in the spring if you're near an area where there's a lot of geese, just go out there and sit by them, take your goose call with you, and watch what the birds do when you blow your call. Another thing you want to remember, this call will really carry. So like on a day like today, if I was sitting down in the boat, and the geese are coming in, and they're working, you don't want to be blowing at the geese. You want to get your call down so that the sound goes out and goes across the water. So they can't pinpoint that the goose is sitting in the cattails and the decoys aren't making a noise. That'll help your success rate a little bit. All right, so basically what I'm going to do is kind of give you a routine. Say there's a goose or a couple of geese out there, parallel owners if you will, that are out there about two, three hundred yards. They're making a little bit of noise and you know they've already spotted your decoys because that's when you heard them and they're coming toward you. So I'll kind of demonstrate what I what I would do with these birds and then we're gonna pretend that as usual they just don't want to drop right down they're gonna make a pass and then kinda of wanna head out a little bit so I'm gonna go through a little bring them back routine and then hopefully set them down over the top of the deeks and shoot the gun so here's what we, here's what I would do Now I'm going real slow because I'm listening to see if they're going to respond with their call back and I'm also watching them. If they start to turn, now I got their undivided attention. And let's say that they're honking pretty good. So I'm going to go with them. I'm going to be excited. If they're going to be quiet and maybe just give a honk or two, then I'm just going to do this. But if they're excited, Okay, so let's say they started to commit and they're coming for the decoys. Two things could happen here. It's either going to stay to this, and I'm going to be listening to see if they're talking back to the decoys. If all of a sudden they get quiet, but they're still committed, it's just going to be what I was just doing. Real simple clucks just enough to keep their attention. But if they're excited and coming in, just like that, I'm gonna keep pace with them. Now let's say that they committed and weren't quite sure, went a little bit wide. I'm, and let's say they were just being quiet, then I'm gonna stay with the Now all of a sudden they've turned out and they're going past the decoys and they're still interested but you think they're going to leave. Now they're coming back. Now because you went through all that and they're committed it's just to keep them right into the decoys. And right about there you ought to be pulling the gun up. And that's basically about it. But the important thing is 
to describe a situation and be in an actual situation with the geese, they're always different, all the time, every day. They're never the same. So it goes back to listening is really important, watching the geese, see what they're doing, keep an eye on their heads. If their heads crank around, you've got their undivided attention. If they start talking back and turn towards you, you've got them. Stick with what you were doing. Don't try to overdo it. Again, listen to what they're doing. Respond to them. And hopefully you're saying the right words. There's only two things that they like to talk about. One of them's food. The other one we can't talk about on TV. Okay? So if you're saying one of the two things that they want to hear, they'll be here. And that's basically about it. So, little practice, good luck, and shoot straight. Bang.